Hey everybody. Well, since uh, we're all in quarantine and uh, it's a beautiful day out here now, you know it's a nice sunny day. Let's go ahead and get this thing out and I'll give you all an update. Perfect time to take a break and go have a little fun at least. So to do this video update, I am apologize ahead of time. I'm going to be a little random and it's probably going to be a little long, but I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to kind of fill in the first video <clears throat> and to um, kind of clarify maybe a couple of things uh, because the first video was pretty short and sweet um, so I just want to make sure everybody understands where I was coming from with some of that stuff and go ahead and give you an update on, on where I am and how things have gotten to the point where it is now. So without further ado, so now that we get this thing out in the sun you can see the white with black and I mean, I, of course I'm a little biased, but it's, it's pretty sharp. This was always a white car with black stripes. Now, the original hood was flat. It didn't have a cowl hood, but it does have a steel cowl hood on it. Um, it is the non-functional cowl. So it is you know, technically an SS hood, but the functional cowl, of course, had the, the flapper back here. It was vacuum operated. When you hit the gas, it flipped up. <coughs> well, we got more air. Um, so this is not the original white though. This is now a Toyota Super White and Tuxedo Black. So, uh, you know, it's odd, odd to think that a white having some pop without pearl or metal flake in it is kind of weird, but this one actually does have some pretty good pop. But what helps too is the white is so super bright and the black is so deep. I don't know if this is come, any of this is coming up in the camera. But maybe you can get an idea. But the contrast is so extreme that it really kind of gives a pop. You get the really br the brightness of the white and just the deepness of the black. And it really, really sets it off. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, you're probably noticing panel gaps aren't the best. But, you know, this is a driver. It's not a show car. The other thing is this thing has been in its fair share of accidents. Uh, and I was thinking about this the other day. It's probably been at least four that I know of and all of it's been in the front end So pretty much all the sheet metal forward of the doors has been replaced at some point in some cases multiple points And it's pretty straight. There are some shims in it, but it's enough to kind of get it back going and It's kind of evidenced by the mainly in the front bumper, which has been replaced You can see the panel gaps and everything in here And then as you travel down the car it looks okay looks okay looks okay And then you get over here <laughs> And there is there's no gap anymore and this is tucked in pretty tight <clears throat> so yeah it's it's shifted uh, and the car has a little bit of a lean to it but uh, these a bodies especially the more powerful ones tend to twist a little bit so yeah you kind of compensate for it and so you know again not perfect but you know what it goes really good I um, see all the door seals window seals trunk seals all that's been replaced the, the hinge pins in the doors have all been redone so you can see alignment is just spot on and it sounds exactly like it's supposed to so no sag in the doors everything's great there <coughs> and yeah these wheels yeah these are 17s so they're very reminiscent of the 70s rally wheels that were common on a lot of muscle cars not just Chevrolet's but these are 17s rather than 14s so yeah it really does a good job setting off the car and of course the chrome and black do a good job with the white and black while we're here in the front they create a graphic to kind of commemorate my brother so I kind of have to show that and while we're at it we'll mention his name is Aaron and uh, he died of uh, histiocytic sarcoma really nasty cancer so of course I put this back here in his honor too um, rest of the car so I I believe it has either one inch or two inch drop springs I'm not entirely sure but it is lowered a little bit it had tubular uh, control arms in the front uh, it still has stock control arms in the back although those are getting a little tired I probably end up replacing those at some point it does have a 12 volt in the back instead of the stock 10 volt and it does have disc brakes in the front from an SS um, although with upgraded rotors so it's, there's the, uh, the rear end and the front brakes were from an SS car. 
and it was a long time ago. It was back in the day when you can go to about any salvage yard and you could find uh, Chevelle, you know, 10 Chevelles. So it, that made that easier. So let me get back under the hood. Um, you have to, have to apologize again. It's a two handed process. It's got a heavy hood, too. <clears throat> okay, so I'll talk here a little bit. You might notice the air cleaner is a little different. The side filter is the same, the top filter, I did do a filter lid. Um, in order to clear the hood, this thing has a really deep drop base on it. And there's some more massaging that had to be, had to be done in order to clear the uh, throttle linkage. So the distance from the top of the carburetor to the lid is really, really high. So it almost felt like there's a bit of a choking point in the distance between the lid and the top of the carburetor. So I did go ahead and put the filter lid on it <coughs> to help make sure we're not having a creating a choke point because this blower uh, produces about six pounds boost maybe slightly higher maybe seven hard to tell exactly it's hard to hard to watch the boost gauge when this thing goes under boost because it takes all your faculties to keep this thing going um, but this is a 144 cubic inch blower and oddly enough in the spare parts for the car I have a 177 so yeah that I'll probably end up putting that on later but yeah that will make this thing eat tires left and right. I haven't been really uh, gung-ho about putting it on just yet. I have other things I gotta do first. Um, while we're here, a couple of things. The um, uh, Obviously my brother, when Aaron was working on the car, um, it had an old set of electric fans in here from forever ago. The fans were worn out. The frames were broken, glued and broken again. The wire was crispy. So I figured, okay, heck with it. I'm gonna pull all that out. I did go back to a clutch fan. And it's a six blade instead of a five blade, so I get a lot more cooling. I had to heavily modify the fan shroud because I had to space out the fan and fan clutch in order to clear the blower belt and the blower and the idler, blower belt idler. And this is a four row radiator, so I had to trim the back side of the shroud in order to make sure it's not rubbing on the radiator. Sorry, sorry for shaking the phone, I'm trying to do all this one handed. Um, so yeah, I had to trim the back side of the shroud, the front side of the shroud, and I know some people are gonna hate it, but yeah, there's a spacer between the water pump and the fan clutch. And some people will say, no, you cannot do that. Well, you can, but you gotta be careful about it. You gotta be sure um, everything is straight and balanced. And if you do it right and you get good parts, you, you can make that work. Um, this one is not a cast piece. This is extruded and turned and the centers are dead on and the fitment was perfect so there's no vibration no shaking nothing i mean it's it works exactly as it should and i've put several hundred miles on this thing and there's, there's no vibe still no vibration nothing going on with the water pump everything's good <laughs> um also yeah, this a cover bottle i found in his parts um so i got that installed i had no idea where i was going to put it so i had to get kind of slick with the installation try to figure out where where to make it work and I think I found a pretty nice place for it there. Um, yeah, the air conditioning, this is a factory AC car, so it's Malibu, and so it's pretty pretty well optioned, probably more middle of the road as far as Malibus go. Um, I did uh, completely redo the cooling system, pull the flush radiator, uh, replace the heater control valve, replace all the hoses, uh, rerouted the hoses, kind of cleaned all this up, kind of made my own brackets here for keeping all the hoses, hoses at bay. And so that's all working really good. <clears throat> uh, interior, eh, I haven't done much, although I did figure out the dome light wasn't turning off, no matter what you did. Well, a lot of wiring tracing, and I figured out it was a headlight switch, it was, it was bad. Because the dome light would turn off when you turn the headlights on. So, <laughs> just, just a you know, bad contacts in the switch. I'll replace that, it's not worth even trying to fix. Oh, we yeah, have some more finer details while we're looking around. That's a Long tube headers and three inch exhaust. So clearances are pretty tight under the car, but I have to do a little clean up on some of that stuff. At the, also at the exhaust, <coughs> you know, the, the tips, they come through cutouts in the rear valence. So as, a, as opposed to dropping down underneath, it's trimmed out and it's, it's a fairly modern twist. So a modern twist on a classic, that's kind of the theme of this car. You might even notice too, the rear, rear bumper, especially compared to the front, it's pretty dull. Um, but there's no rust and it is the original bumper so you know if it ain't broke don't fix it and that, again it's not a show car and uh, I did 
go ahead and have the trunk open just kind of give an idea of what kind of life this thing has it's all these, all these miles it has on it and this is still here it brings back a lot of memories so yeah this thing had a trailer hitch on it I mean that's you know, plugging in the harness so you just put that over the edge close the trunk hook up the trailer and you're on your way we go dirt bikes to get it all the time so yeah. he drove he's older than me so he drove first <laughs> so he took us on all our adventures <coughs> <coughs> Uh, so let's see what's left of it. The, the rear end's cooked, so I need to rebuild that. Um, I did replace the U-joints in the drive shaft. Those are cooked. Um, I checked every bolt underneath the car. The transmission pan bolts and a couple of engine oil pan bolts were a little loose. And of course I will change those kind of things. Um, yeah, so it's still a fair bit of... You know, it's like, like they say, like the last 15% of the project takes 50% of your time. Because <laughs> all those little things just will eat you up. And that's kind of the same thing here. and Because, you know, again, I, I didn't have all the parts, so I'm not finding out what I'm missing until I get to it. Which does bring up another point. I did mention that a car's a pile of parts. Well, sort of. I mean, that is true. But the car was sort of running, driving rolling on its own chassis under its own power. It didn't run very good because it sat so long. But I got that cleaned up and it runs great now. But the main thing was the interior. But I do, I mean, he, Aaron did already buy the headliner, carpet, sail panels. Um, this is the original seat bottom. The seat back was missing. I never found that. At least I did, I did dig, dig up one of those. So obviously it'll all get recovered later. I mean, these, this driver's seat's covered in duct tape, so. Um, yeah, it's all going to get recovered. Um, I, did, I did go ahead and do three point seat belts, four corners. Um, those are from Morris Classics. Actually, they built in pretty well. I had to do some modifications in the back though because that rear package shelf is heavily modified so it didn't quite fit, but I got it all worked out. And then when I finish it up, that'll all be, be worked out. You won't even know the speakers are back there and everything will line up just fine. Yeah, of course, the three points, eh, it's something he was talking about doing, but, but he was also the perpetual bachelor, and I have a family, so yeah, we're doing three points. Sorry, bud. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he probably would have done that anyway, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, I think that's, I think that's where I'll leave this one. Ho hopefully, next time I'll have some real updates. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching and hope everybody stays safe. Have a good one.